And coming up next, shooting for the stars. I'll speak to four local men who've broken a Canadian record with their hand-built rocket ship. There it goes. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thanks, Jackie. To a story now of teamwork, perseverance, and, uh, well, the power of thinking big, a team of enthusiasts from here in Calgary have broken the Canadian record for the largest amateur-built rocket. Here's David Bueller, Wayne Gallagher, Ian Stevens, and Scott West, the proud members of Team O Canada. Gentlemen, let me start with congratulations to you all. Well, thank, you well, thank, you thank you very much. much. You know, it's not every day I get a chance to talk to a team of rocket scientists. Uh, <laughs> David Bueller, you're the flight director. Can you explain this, please? How, first of all, tell me about your accomplishment. What happened? Oh, well, as you said, we've made Canadian history here. Uh, basically, this is the largest uh, amateur-built rocket in Canada, and we also have launched it with the, the most powerful motor that has ever been launched in Canada. Uh, the weight of this thing is about 300 pounds loaded with the propellant. We're about 16 and a half feet long. Uh, We've got about a 22-inch uh, diameter airframe with a six-foot fin span. So it's one big it's one, crayon. It's one big rocket. There's four guys <laughs> leaning on it there. Yeah. What's your <laughs> propellant? What, what blasted this thing into the sky? Well, I'll let uh, Wayne uh, get into that one. All right, over to Wayne. Wayne, the propulsion lead. What did what, what'd you, what'd you stuff in this thing, Wayne? Well, the, the motor for this rocket was actually made by Cesaroni Technologies in Gormley, Ontario. Mm -hmm. It's actually made out of ammonium perchlorate, which is the same propellant that the space shuttle uses on its solid boosters. All right. It's uh, slightly smaller, of course, because the rocket here would fit inside one of those boosters. But it, uh, it, the motor that we used in this one, we actually used three of them in order to get right up to our upper limit of Newton second thrust that we're allowed to use. We had a central O5100 motor, which is a 6.3 inch diameter by 3.5 foot long motor that weighs about 55 pounds. And then we had two outboard L2100 motors, which weigh another about 10 pounds each. Altogether, it created about 2,400 pounds of thrust when the all three rotors were running. You know, people right now are seeing a picture of this thing being blasted off into the sky. How long did the flight actually last? The flight was actually about uh, 12, 22 seconds, I should say, to Apogee, and then about another two to three minutes coming back down under parachutes. Hang on, let me get this right. You guys worked on this thing for eight months for four minutes of fun. <laughs> that's, <laughs> exactly. That's, yeah, that's the way it works. <laughs> okay. Ian Stevens, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, Ian. Give me an idea. Who's, uh, how did you come up with this in the first place? What, what got this thing going? Well, it was almost uh, about a year ago when uh, Cesaroni Technologies announced that they were going to make this uh, o motor uh, shortly. And uh, we all, a bunch of us down at the that launch uh, last year thought, geez, it'd be cool to put a rocket together uh, using that motor. And so it kind of snowballed from there. Uh, in about October, we, we uh, started talking about a design um, and we came up with this design. And uh, starting in December, we started the uh, construction of the rocket. So from December until uh, Friday uh, last week, we were, we were working on this rocket uh, almost constantly. Now, I understand Scott is the airframe lead, and he might not be able to hear me. So if you can't hear me, Scott, I'll get Ian, you to tell Scott, oh, what did you build this thing out of? How did, you, how did you make sure that it wouldn't explode the minute it took off? Scott, See, why don't you tell them we built it out of? Sorry, Wayne? Tell them what we built it out of. Uh, actually, the rocket's built uh, primarily out of uh, cardboard tubes. Uh, there's a lot of fiberglass reinforcing on the inside and some aluminum structures to hold the fins together. But uh, other than that, it's all basically sono tubes available at Home Depot or your favorite construction store. The Home Depot rocket, David Bueller. <laughs> I'm going to go back to you out of this. Uh, how, did, how, much was, how much did it cost in the end? I mean, and, and who, whose pocket did it come out of? I'm, I'm looking at you guys. I mean, surely you've got day jobs here. Oh, we all have day jobs. And our wives have missed us for the last eight months, too, because we, as soon as we got home from work, we were out in the garage. <laughs> but the, uh, the rocket, uh, basically the cost of it uh, was about $1,500. I mean, we had uh, significant expenses in the nose cone. We had that uh, cut out of styrofoam, so we've got that styrofoam up there okay. with the fiberglass wrap. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad you brought up the issue of your wives, because it allows me to ask this question. How did you get the time to do this? And furthermore, how do you explain to your neighbors, oh yeah, we're just building a little rocket in the basement? Well, th I think they were uh, a little bit used to us uh, after a little bit. We did pull the rocket out uh, about three, three months ago uh, to stand it up and get some pictures of it before we took it down to the Aerospace Museum. And uh, we certainly got to meet a lot of our new neighbors now. Uh, they all swarmed out saying, what the heck are you guys doing over there? Have you, um, have you managed to garner a lot of support in the community to help you out with this? Uh, 
not too much. I mean, everybody's quite interested. They all wanted to come down and see the launch, although our launch was uh, in a rather remote location. It takes a long time to get to mm -hmm. from Calgary. Uh, but they're all very interested. They want to see the video of this thing going up. Uh, they want to see, hear the stories of uh, all the, the trials and tribulations that we uh, went through to uh, get this down there, get this on the pad, and finally launched. Well, talk about the trial and tribulations. What was the toughest part of getting this thing in the air? <laughs> Well, I think it was uh, maybe the uh, night before we were planned to launch, about 2, 2 a.m., uh, we had a wind and rainstorm flow through the uh, campsite. And uh, I was out there yelling, get out here, get out here, because uh, the wind had knocked over the, the whole airframe. We had the fins on, everything. <laughs> and we're going, oh, no, we're not going to be able to launch. Something's going to get broken. Sure. Uh, but in the end, it worked. Uh, we, we kind of overbuilt Fourteen. it, I think. Do you mean up to the very last minute when you set this thing off, you weren't 100% sure if it was going to go? Uh, we were pretty sure. I mean, we just had to take each uh, little glitch that popped up, work it through, and uh, get it solved. Final question, any one of you guys who wants to chip in, what next? Next is just time for a bit of a break, because uh, thanks to our wives being as patient as they were, we are now going to spend some time with them and just kind of relax for a little while. Yard work and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. But we will in the future get together again, and uh, something else will come up, and we'll see what goes from there. I imagine there are four very neglected lawns at this moment going on, Albert. <laughs> uh, no, we have, we have sons. Uh, all right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Once again, congratulations, and thanks for bringing your toy in. I appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome back. Four Calgary men had quite a blast over the weekend, literally. They're a group of amateur rocketeers who've just set a Canadian record. Jennifer Kirby has their story. Better be careful, it's peeling the paint off it. When they're not building rockets, these guys have regular jobs. One installs floor coverings, another is a mechanical engineer. They met through Calgary's Rocketry Club, got together and built this, the biggest, most powerful amateur rocket in Canada. We wanted to provide some uh, coverage for rocketry and get some exposure for rocketry in Canada. These are a very good educational toy for teaching kids about science and technology. Over the weekend, they launched their baby. It shot a kilometer and a half into the air at 700 kilometers per hour. It broke the Canadian record. The actual launch itself was absolutely amazing. Uh, just the, the overwhelming emotions of, of seeing all this, all this work put together and uh, having it come off perfectly. Uh, the launch couldn't have gone any better. Uh, so that's one of the critical pieces here. Uh, internally, where the fins attach, we've got some more uh, aluminum in here. And these uh, fins actually pop off. And you can see the aluminum, it just stabilizes the fins so they're nice and tight. They don't wobble as they go up. It took eight months and cost $1,500 to build. The rocket has three motors and five onboard flight computers. We started the design work in uh, October of last year, and uh, we finished the design work and started construction December 1st last year, and we've been working on it pretty much every weekend since, uh, since then. Meanwhile, NASA's been having problems with one of its rockets, delaying the latest flight to Mars. So how can four amateurs manage to launch a rocket when NASA can't? <laughs> well, you know, uh, with regards to that uh, little delay that NASA's having, every kind of project, when, when you get a larger projects, uh, the, the details involved in the project are so huge that there's always going to be some kind of a glitch. Next time, they'll be aiming for altitude. The next project will be a smaller rocket that will go higher. As for this one, it's retired now. It'll go on display at Calgary's Aerospace Museum. Jennifer Kirby, CBC News, Calgary.